Sure. Okay, we are live and ready to rock and roll. Um, my name is Chris Rolfe. I'm the founder of Boulder SEO Marketing. I'm super excited to have with me here today, Josh Martin of Denver Marketing Solutions. We're strategic partners. Uh, my shop, Boulder SEO Marketing or BSM, as we like to say now, was super hyper-focused on organic SEO. And Josh and his team tackle Google Ads and pay-per-click. Uh, Josh, over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. And I'm very happy to be here today and talk a little bit more about pay-per-click and what it is. And over the next 60 minutes, you're going to become an expert in the most effective strategies when using a Google Ads campaign, how to navigate the changing habits of consumers and clients, the most effective and up-to-date SEM techniques, and the basics of image advertising and how you can target customers with something called remarketing. Okay, maybe you might not be an expert, but at least you're going to know where to start. Hey, hey, Josh, can you move a little bit closer to your mic? You're oh, a little certainly. Bit far away there. Well, I introduce myself again. Again, my name is Chris. I'm the founder of Boulder SEO Marketing, BSM, as we now like to say. We're super hyper-focused on organic SEO search engine optimization. That also includes web design, content marketing. We also do social media as part of our SEO strategy. Uh, I'm originally from Switzerland, moved to Boulder a long time ago. It's a great place to be if you like uh, skiing and mountaineering. And uh, I've been in digital marketing for about, gosh, over two decades. And uh, I love to talk about SEO. So I'll be sharing um, in my follow-up email information about the upcoming SEO webinar. With that being said, enough about me, Josh, over to you. No worries at all. And my name is Josh Martin. I'm originally from New Jersey. I came to Colorado in about 2007. I've been in the digital marketing field for 15 years. I'm an owner of a business, a consultant. I generally enjoy anything outside. So camping, football, hiking, and just learning new things. I'm a Google certified premier partner, being accredited professional, uh, and Google grant recipient. Before I dive into the meat and potatoes of today, we'd like to get this offer off the table. Here at Denver Marketing Solutions, we'd like to extend an exclusive offer to participants of this course. We're pleased to offer free video vignette production. And a little later today, you'll see what those videos look like and 10% off search engine marketing services, which we'll also get a good look at later today. Uh, in addition to this discount, we're offering a market analysis. And this is a pretty hefty document. It looks at what your competitors are currently doing in the marketplace, projects what you could receive with the Google Ads campaign, um, and gives you a good understanding of the types of strategies that would work well for you. But with that out of the way, let's dive in. So today we're going to look at SEO and SEM, what they are and why they're better together. The evolving search results page or SERP. And then we're going to do a live demo. We're actually going to show you how quick and easy it can be to build a search advertising campaign in Google Ads and show you some of the common pitfalls to watch out for when setting up your first campaign. Then we're going to show you how to manage your search advertising campaign and give you some tips um, for what you can do after having launched that. Next, display advertising and remarketing, what it is and how we can benefit, how it can benefit you. While we won't have a demonstration of that, we will give you a good understanding of how you can use it. Then if time allows, we're going to look at what's coming next for Google because it's always evolving and always getting better. And then finally, last but not least, questions and answers towards the end of today's session. Awesome. And then I just want to mention, so we do record this session. If you have to bolt early, do not fear. Uh, I will sync, uh, send the link to the recording. And then, of course, you're always welcome to directly reach out to Josh with any additional uh, questions. Uh, I'll include his email in the follow-up email as well. Thanks, Josh. Over to you. Happy to. So SEO and SEM, better together. So SEO stands for search engine optimization and SEM is search engine marketing. You can think of SEM as generally anything out there that would be a paid to click situation. It could be a text ad that you see at the top of Google. A lot of people are familiar with those, but it could also be things like video, images. It's really any situation where you're paying for that certain engagement. In this case, it would be a click. 
let's look a, look at it a little bit deeper by right? kind of let's dissect the anatomy of the cert the search engines results page so it all starts here with with a keyword a query really it's whatever somebody enters into the search engine to get these results then we have shopping ads these are paid advertisements also known as plas product listing ads and these are really great um, for um, b2c customers that have a tangible product that they can sell preferably over for their website in an e-commerce situation. Uh, it's not great for people who are B2C, so, um, or B2B, pardon me. So you cannot be selling services through this portal here. But if you have a tangible product, it's a great way to get your price, picture, even a promotion right there at the top of Google through a form of SEM called Google Shopping. Next, we have the text ads. Now, this is where Google makes 90% of its revenue. And that's because it's very effective. And it's also because it's very simple to set up. We're going to be able to set one of these, these ads up a little bit later in today's presentation. These are also known as PPC or pay per click advertisements. Then towards here, you then see the organic search results. These you cannot influence through paid mediums. In fact, these you need to really put down a lot of foundation into your site to show up very well here. That's why I often recommend before anybody considers doing any sort of paid advertising, make sure that their search engine optimization is as finely pointed and, and polished as it could be, um, because that's going to help you in a plethora of ways. And we'll have some examples of why that is in a few more slides here. And Josh, so there we can kind of think. Yes. Oh, Josh, I think it's also worth mentioning that the better your website is optimized from an organic standpoint, the less eventually you're going to pay per click. Is, is that correct? That is correct. And um, really, you can actually pay the least per click and be in this number one position. Um, and we'll actually show you how to do that. And so this person here in the top position, Pampers, also does very well in the organic positioning. So it pays a lower cost per click and Google puts them higher in the search results, kind of as a reward for doing their due diligence and, and building a, a well-rounded website. So oftentimes that's a question I get too is, well, why would I pay for placement if I'm already showing up in organic listings and I'm comfortable, I'm feeling well with the organic listings? Well. Your customers expect to find you and paid advertising gives you that immediate traffic. It can often be good to augment with a little bit of paid advertising as your SEO begins to ramp up. It lets you control your messaging, the landing page you send people to and test those two things. And again, we'll have examples of how that works. You can own and control more page real estate. Real estate's huge. And when we refer to real estate in this instance, we're just talking about how much your website or your social media properties take up in any given search uh, for any given term. We'll show you what that looks like as well. Paid coupled with organic, it just drives more overall traffic to your website. Paid coupled with organic, it's going to improve your key brand health metrics, or in other words, brand recognition and it influences purchase. I actually have some more numbers on how it influences purchase here. It boasts an 858% higher conversion rate than traditional outbound marketing methods. So you're gonna get more leads and sales out of this than a traditional approach. A 50% higher conversion rate than organic alone, a 200% average return on investment. So if you build this properly, you'll have a machine that you can put a dollar in and it's gonna spit out $2. 65% of all clicks made by users who intend to make a purchase tend to go through a paid advertisement and it gives you an 80% brand lift to awareness. And a lot of this has to do with something I call the savvy gap. So for example, let's say your website only has a organic listing. If that's the case, you have a 42% likelihood someone's going to enter a search term and make it to your website. Let's say you don't have any organic, all that you're showing up for in the search engine is a paid search result. A little bit better, but not great. About a 53% chance that that user is gonna make it to your website. But once you've coupled your paid and organic presence in Google, you have a 95% likelihood that people will make it to your website for any given search term. And a lot of that has to do with people looking at the web and seeing that you're taking up a lot of real estate or a lot of space in the search results. The savvy users that understand the difference between a paid search result and an organic search result, they 
they tend to get an understanding of prominence when exposed to your brand in this way. And they think, wow, these, this brand is really on the ball. And they tend to do you a favor and skip past your paid ad and click your organic link. The non-savvy users who really don't know the difference or care to know the difference between paid and organic listings have that very same impression. They say, wow, this brand is really prominent and is the most applicable thing for what I'm looking for. Um, but in that case, they tend to click your paid advertisement, given that they're a little bit more impatient. So now that we kind of have an understanding of how the search result page works and looks, let's, let's look how it's evolved and changed over the recent years here. So let's take a peek at this search result for somebody who's looking for women's shoes. This, this search result is about a decade old. Um, and you can see that they really were calling it out much better that this was an ad. There was kind of this yellowish tan box here. You had the ad icon here. And there was just one ad sitting at the top of the Google search results. Flash forward today and we see a much different landscape where for that same search result, we now see a search that is mostly comprised of ads. We can see a Skechers ad here. That's a nice sized ad. Ad here, here. And a lot of people don't realize that these PLAs here are sponsored listings. So these are also ads that are cascading down the right really only leaving a little section here at this point for this search term. This is what Google would consider a highly commercial term. So it's gonna show a lot of ads in that instance. Let's say we add some, some qualifiers to this. Let's say we add some intent by saying, ladies shoes near me. Now we've really put a lot of intention into our search and we see a search result that is 100% comprised of ads cascading across the top here. We see paid product listings and down towards the right here as well. And a lot of people don't realize you can also take preferred placements in these maps listings. Now, no, famous footwear here can't be 100 miles away from you and be your, your number one result for this search. You still have to be geographically relevant. So if you're, you need to be near the location. But if you are, you can take preferred placement like famous footwear did here and they get these really nice, big, bold check marks or pin button pins here in the Google Maps listing. And I mentioned highly commercial terms. Let's say we put in something a little less commercial, like Best Ladies Shoes 2021 or something to that effect. In that case, we're doing a search that's a little bit more research based. Um, and in this instance, Google tends to show very, very few ads. In fact, this is what's referred to as a position zero result or a short answer result here. And this can actually be influenced through SEO. There's no way to show up in these search results through uh, paid advertising method. And what they're doing here is actually helping consumers to get at the information they need quick and easy um, without running the risk of showing ads to people who are still in a research phase and not very interested. So it does protect a couple things, the search result from becoming 100% ads um, and protects the advertisers from showing ads to people uselessly and kind of wastefully. And I keep mentioning page real estate. Let, let's dissect that a little bit more. Um, this is a search result where somebody's just looking for diapers. And we can see that diapers.com is doing an amazing job with page real estate. We can see that they have this big ad here, cascading all the way down to here. And they've done a good job of pushing their competition further down out of this pack of ads. And you'll notice that the competition actually has very small ads. These are kind of your out of the box, very basic. You did the bare minimum for Google to let you run an ad. Whereas diapers.com has used every little bit of their space here to really take up as much space and push down their competitors. You'll also see they're doing extremely well in the organic listings. So they're the number one search result organically. And over here in the product listing ads, they're represented here as well as here. So they're doing a really good job of dominating their page real estate, which again is just how much space you take up for any given search result that you would want your brand to appear for. The interesting bit is diapers.com is paying the least for this position. So you can see these three advertisers here with this kind of standard out of the box ad, they're actually gonna pay more to sit down here in a lower position, whereas diapers.com is gonna pay less 
to be in the number one position. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they've done their due diligence with SEO and they have a good search engine optimization strategy. That, that really does help to drop their cost per click and get them to the top of this pack. Their competitors likely don't have, have as robust of a search engine optimization strategy. Something else that they're use, utilizing is ad extensions. These are huge. And when we get to the live demo, we'll go ahead and show you how to set these up. But you can see they put a review extension here. They have site link extensions here. These take up a lot of space. These are great. And so they've provided Google with more information and, and more things that it could test and rotate out in the search result. So because of that, it also gets rewarded with a lower cost per click and a higher page position in Google search. Let's dive into this ad a little bit more because there's more going on here than just a simple ad. They're doing obviously a good job of occupying page real estate, but they're also through Google ads able to test varying promotions, something that cannot be done organically. So for example, in this promotion, this user saw get 20% off thousands of items. Well, you can rotate this where every other user seems sees a different incentive. So the next user could see, for example, buy one, get one free, or a different form of incentive. And this will allow you to test what um, wording and types of incentives your audience engages with most. Something else that's very important here, besides just a B testing similar um, uh, promotions, is promotional consistency. So you see the promotion was seen here in Google search and the landing page that that user went to also immediately shows them the promotion and instructs them how to get that. You can lose a lot of people who see your promotion in an ad and then don't immediately see it when they get to their landing page. They can feel a little bit baited and switched, um, especially if they try to go back to see your ad, Google's likely not going to show it to them again. Um, so having that consistency, consistency between the ad copy and the landing page is key. And then, hey, Josh, remember uh, one day uh, we had a potential customer. They ask, uh, you know, is it OK if we have an ad in English and then direct people to like a Spanish landing page, et cetera, or vice versa? Just a quick any advice on that, if there's anybody out there that may have a, you know, dealing with that. Yes, I mean, and, and, and with that, we just want consistency, be it language or topic. And so really there's there's three things to keep in mind when, when developing copy in that way. And it's what's the landing page I'm sending them to and what is the content of that landing page about? Your ad copy needs to very closely reflect that content. So it needs to talk about the same content as the, as the page you're sending them to. Uh, and likewise, any sort of targeting that you're using with the ads. For example, your keywords need to point to a relevant page. The example I like to use is back to shoes. So for example, let's say you have an ad that talks about kids' shoes. You have a landing page that talks about men's shoes and you have keywords for that ad that talk about women's shoes. They're all very similar things, but they're not uh, relevant to one another. Um, and in this live demo piece, we'll have a couple examples about how that, how to write ads that are considered effective in that manner. And also um, the QR code on the screen, uh, if you haven't already, you can scan that to get a PDF of today's slides. Let's dive in. So before I get into the actual live demo where we'll go into Google ads and we're gonna build out this campaign, I want to show you what it looks like from scratch. I know some of you visiting today may already have a Google Ads account. This may, some of the pitfalls that we're going to go through here may help you to tweak and upgrade your existing Google Ads account. But it seems pretty simple and straightforward, but there are a few things to watch out for when setting up your Google Ads for the first time. So first and foremost, it's how you sign in. Um, if you've already used uh, a Gmail or an email account to sign up for, let's say, a Google My Business profile or a YouTube profile, at this point, it's really important to use that same email address. And we'll see why in a moment here, but it does help Google to better understand um, all of your disparate data sources out there. After having placed that email in there, 
Google's going to immediately start asking you about your goals. So really think hard, even though there's only three options here about what's important to your business, um, because this is going to influence Google's machine learning tools moving forward. And it's going to instruct them what is the highest priority for you. In this example, the client's only priority is to get more phone calls, but you could also get website sales, signups, leads, um, or physical location visits as a priority. Once you've identified those, click Next. Again, at this juncture, it's important to think of any properties that you may, might already have with Google. Uh, most importantly, if you have already set up a Google My Business listing, um, make sure when you put your business name in this box, it's spelled exactly as you have it in Google My Business. Um, for example, a common pitfall is people who have and in their name. They might put an ampersand symbol here instead of writing out and, and over there in Google My Business, it's written out. That's going to make it a little harder for Google to make an association uh, between your Google My Business profile and this new Google Ads that you're setting up. Next. Throw your website URL or landing page that you intend to use here. Google's going to send some spiders and robots, basically, to crawl your site. And at this point in time, it might find that there's some issues with your site. Either it's not functioning well mobily, uh, maybe it doesn't have the proper terms and conditions and privacy policy in place. And if there is an issue, it's going to let you know what those issues are. At, at this point in time, I highly recommend you put a pause on building any more Google Ads campaign if you are getting any warnings on this screen, address the issues about your website, and then revisit this at a later date. Um, oftentimes, um, the processes is done in search engine optimization are the processes that they're looking at here. Um, so again, by having a good search engine optimization strategy in place before ever making your way to Google Ads, you will avoid getting hung up on this portion of the screen. <clears throat> Next, it's going to talk to you about um, writing ad copy. And think about as you write this ad copy, what your main point is and where you'll be sending them to. Are you sending them to your home page? Are you sending them to a specific page on your website? And that's going to help you to better flesh out the copy in a way that is going to be Google friendly. So in this instance, this is a pet sitting, pet care, and pet supply business. Uh, they have a brick and mortar store, but their main goal here is to get more calls in regards to grooming and walking and sitting services. Um, and so we've written an ad here that really does try to hit that mark. Now, when writing this, a couple pitfalls to watch out for. For one, try to use as many characters as you can. You can see here that we had 30 characters and we were able to use 30. We had 30 here and we were able to use 27. This all goes back to page real estate. So the more characters that you can use up, the beefier and bigger your page real estate will be. Something else to consider too is it's important to have a call to action. Don't just tell them about your business, tell them what they can do with this information. Uh, call to actions or CTAs can be as simple as learn more, call now, book an appointment, or they can be a little bit more uh, aggressive like what we saw in the diapers.com example where it was a monetary incentive as your call to action. Never use exclamation points. That's going to get your ad disapproved by Google. It's one of those, those strange little quirks, as well as never use the word click. It's a tendency of a lot of people to say click here or click now, uh, but that word is verboten. A best practice as well is to use title case, so where we're capitalizing every word, um, and where we can shorten up words with, with punctuation like ampersands for the word and. That's going to allow you to maximize the amount of characters you can use after that. Wherever you can, um, and if you can, it's good to put pricing in your ad copy. Um, albeit this example does not have pricing, it's a bit more price sensitive of an example, it's good wherever you can. Here's why. In this situation, you're paying per click. And if somebody was to see your pricing and see that that service is not within its, their range, it's not palatable to them, They'll never click your ad, so they will self-disqualify themselves from your service before ever clicking your ad. 
li likewise with people who that price is palatable. Um, they're going to self-qualify before having ever clicked your ad. And it saves you some money um, because less people who will not be able to afford the product or service will click the ads. And again, always important to use as many characters as you can. One other thing to note, little pitfall down here when setting up a new campaign. Uh, the phone number you enter here will be the phone number that people can call you from this ad. Um, and it's important that if you have a Google My Business account uh, or a YouTube account that you've associated with this phone number to use that same number. Again, it just goes back to helping Google to connect the dots and their machine learning tools to do its best work for you. Next, it's going to look at the ad you've written and it's going to come up with some keyword suggestions. Keywords are just what people enter in the search engine, that, as we saw earlier, that trigger the ads and the search results. You'll want to think about what you talked about in your ad and keep those pretty tightly themed to the topics of your ad. I recommend first ad set and ad group like this, just do five to 10 keywords. Don't go too crazy with the amount of keywords, but make sure that they're tightly themed to what your dog, well, pardon me, what your ad was talking about. In this case, uh, we're talking about dog walking, grooming and sitting services. And so our keywords are a mixture of those topics there. Go ahead and click next. And it's gonna ask you, what geography do you want this to be? By default, it's going to have a 15 mile radius um, for most brick and mortar businesses. 30 is about about right about as far as they're pulling people from. Um, but you don't have to be stuck here with radiuses. You can definitely uh, get more specific. You can use zip codes, cities, regions, heck, even a city block can be used or congressional districts can be used. So um, sky's the limit in terms of how little or how much geography you want to target your ads for. Here it's going to give you some suggested budgets. This is based off of the keywords that we've chosen, the landing page that we're sending people to, uh, and the ad copy, and how relevant Google feels those three things are to one another. Um, it gives you a middle, low, and high range. And oftentimes, this middle range is more than fine to just get started, dip your toe in the water, and see the benefits of Google Ads. That's going to let you know that that's about $12 a day, which is 365 a month max maximum. You can also enter your own budget if you'd like, but I find that their projections tend to be pretty good from this, this point on. It's now gonna confirm everything that you've put in there. Uh, do double check that you haven't you know, made any of those pitfall errors that, that your business name is written exactly as it is in Google My Business, the phone number, so on and so on. And then from there, we're ready to actually go into the live Google Ads screen. It's going to drop you into a screen that looks a lot like this. It can be a bit daunting. You might not know, you know what all's happening in here at first. Um, and really take it one piece at a time. You'll see that you'll have an ad campaign here that they've made. And it's in this case, made you an ad group called Dog Walking. It was able to deduce this by the dog walking services in the ad copy. So it named this for you. But right now, if we go over here to your ads and, and look at what we have, we really only have one of those out of the box standard ads that we saw in the diapers.com example. Now, this ad's going to be running because at this point in time, they've collected your billing information. Um, and so we really want to give it all the ammunition it can possibly use. Some of those extensions that I mentioned earlier are the best way to begin beefing up your ad campaign. And that's done just by going right down here to the extensions page. And everything in Google starts with a blue plus sign to make something new. So we'll just click that blue plus sign. And you'll see that there's a ton of extensions in here. And these, again, are just things that you use to add on to your existing ads. Um, today, we're going to cover the most effective ones that anybody can use. Uh, but there are some extension types that may not work for everyone, but you should consider. For example, location extensions will connect to your Google My Business profile and help to push uh, physical store visits to that location. Uh, price extensions, a great way to use that best practice I mentioned earlier and put the price right in there. Um, but 
Let's go to the ones that really, really almost every business can benefit from. And first and foremost is a call extension. This is later down the line going to allow you to track phone calls, which is huge. Oh, pardon me. Looks like Google's decided to run a little slow here. Let me go back. There it is. And this is going to actually tack on to the bottom of your existing ad copy. So they kind of give you an idea of what that would look like here. You'd have some headlines and some descriptions there. Put your phone number in here. And this is also going to allow you to track uh, conversions later down the line. What I mean by that is you'll be able to track how many people called. And if you opt into it, you can even listen to those phone calls. From here, all you have to do is hit save and we've added on all of this page real estate. Here's what it looks like on a mobile version. And then here's what it would look like on a desktop version. So you can see we're already adding more to this ad and taking up more of that precious page real estate. All right, let's add another. These next ones are called call out extensions. So these are just 25 character blocks and they're little tiny statements here that go at the bottom of your ad. Now, the tendency of a lot of people is to try to string them all together into a sentence. So to take call out extension one, two, three, and four, you can't do that because you can't control the order in which they display. Google's gonna kind of test and, and move those around into different orders. So you really have to take these 25 characters and make it a statement that stands alone. The best practice here is to use things that are really unique to your business, things you want to call out and just raise your hand really briefly. Uh, and in this case, this client, they use GPS tracking when they go out uh, for their walk. So that's pretty unique. That's a good call out. Um, they're also bonded and insured, which in that industry, unfortunately, isn't as common as you'd think. Um, they're locally owned and operated. That's always good to, to see, especially in the areas we're marketing for them. Um, and you know they have this, this vetting process that is second to none. So I think it's important to know that these are well-qualified employees that are coming to your home to take care of your, your cats and dogs. And so you can see again how this has added a lot of page real estate here in the mobile version. And on the desktop version, you can see how it's added all 100 characters to your existing ad. So these are often commonly added, again, just because of their, their beefy page real estate use, um, but don't uh, string these together into a sentence. It's a common tendency, but it will make for some very weird ad copy. Awesome, then you just hit save. So you can see we're really adding a lot, but let's, let's add those site links that we saw in the diapers.com example, because these take up a lot of space. Um, depending if you're looking on a mobile or desktop site, they can be up to uh, 120 extra characters. On a mobile site, they tend to only show the headline as they show in this example here. Um, and on a desktop site, which we'll see in a moment, they tend to show the description as well. Now, site links cannot be the same link you used for your ad. And in this case, this link is going to the homepage. So that just means we cannot use that page for any of these site links. You want to have a minimum of four, uh, but feel free to provide more than four. If you do provide more than four, Google's going to test those and find which ones work the best for your consumers. But at any given time, they can only display a maximum of four site link extensions. One of the more common ones that is often recommended is just a contact us site link that directs people to their contact page. So I'll write one there and we'll give it a little bit of a description as well. Then it's going to ask you what's the landing page or the final URL. Just place that right there. You can see now in our mobile example, we now have our first site link. Another thing I know that they want to call out and isn't mentioned in this ad copy is the fact that they also have private dog walking services. So they can um, take one out at a time rather than group walks. So let's call that out because you can think of it this way. Your ad was like an elevator pitch. You tried to get their attention with this ad. If that didn't work, the site links are trying to get their attention with just a few more tiny pitches, a few more little words. 
All right, about halfway through here, we've got two more. Another big thing for them is dog sitting. They will do in-home dog sitting and albeit it's uh, not mentioned in the ad copy. So we do want to kind of call that out a little bit more here in our site link extensions. Let's see how that's really starting to beef up some of the copy here in these examples. All right, last but not least, it's a smaller service. It's not really mentioned much in the copy, but it is important to the client nonetheless is cat sitting services. So let's just write a headline and description. And again, try to use as many characters as you possibly can. Now we've really begun to take up a ton of page real estate. Let's put this final URL in there, there. You can see how now on a mobile device, we're taking up nearly the entire top of the screen between our call out extensions, our call extension and site link extensions. On a desktop device, we're now taking up a ton of page real estate with our site link extensions. And so just by taking these, this extra two or three minutes here to set up these extension types, we've really given Google a lot more ammunition to work with over here in Google search. And we now have an ad that's a lot more similar to what we saw with diapers.com, where they were able to circumnavigate a lot of what their competition is up to. From there, go ahead and hit save. All of these changes are now applied. So your ads that are running can now show the, these extensions. From here, you can add more ads or you could even add what's called a new ad group. Adding a new ad group, for example, in this case could be a cat sitting services that, where the ad talks specifically about cat sitting. Again, all that is always done with the blue plus sign here. Just a note, as you add on to this campaign, you will want to consider adding more budget. So if you add another set of ads or you add a bunch more keywords to it, the same budget that you agreed to earlier in the setup is likely not going to be enough uh, to, to, to fund the changes made to your account. And although we won't have time to get into it today, and it is a little bit different for everyone, I highly recommend that you go to the tools and settings, conversions tab, and set up your conversion. Tracking. Conversion tracking allows you to know if people purchased from your site, if they made a phone call, filled out a form, really helps you to tr track the success of your campaign, much more than just impressions of your ad or clicks. Another thing I highly recommend is setting up an audience here in Audience Manager. This is going to allow you to unlock all the features that we see over there in Display Remarketing. With that in mind, Let's hop back over to the presentation side of things. Take a look at that. Slow connection there. I see that. Yes. Uh -huh. There we have it. <laughs> <laughs> So pardon me as we get these slides back to there. There we have it. So what we just set up was what's called a search or PPC ad. It's the oldest ad type that Google has had. Um, and it's pretty simple to set up. We just did it there in a little under 10 minutes. And so um, now let's talk a little bit more about the other side of Google, the display advertising and remarketing side of things. Remarketing is a very powerful advertising tool. Um, and in its most basic form, a lot of us are familiar with it when we, let's say you go to an e-commerce website. Uh, let's say it's Best Buy. You look at a nice camera, you showed a lot of interest in a few different cameras, but you didn't purchase a camera that day. Suddenly you leave Best Buy and you're seeing ads from everyone talking about either the cameras you were looking at or similarly built cameras. That in its most basic form is remarketing. It's understanding the person's signals and buying behavior, um, and then beginning to deliver ads to them. And it addresses a core problem that Google has. Um, they've been steadily working themselves out of a job to some degree. And this is because 
we spend less and less time in Google or Bing for that matter. We only spend about 21% of our time searching. And earlier in the internet, we spent a lot more time poking around a search engine, trying to get at what we want. But part of their core mission statement is to get people at the information they're looking for as quickly as possible. And they're definitely doing a good job of that because 79% of our time is now spent outside of search. We're now on blogs, mobile pages, YouTube, Gmail, social networks, you name it. So majority of our time cannot be touched by the type of ad we just built because only 21% of our time is when those search ads can be displayed. To address this, Google has developed the world's largest advertising network ever constructed, the Google Display Network. It goes across over 800 million websites across the world. And what happens is website owners rent a small portion of their website for advertisers using the Google system to either place banner and image ads or even video ads into video players. At the moment, this covers 94% of the internet. So it means you can deliver ads to people almost anywhere they go, except for closed advertising platforms like Facebook or Instagram or uh, Twitter. With the Google Display Network, it answers a problem that we've seen kind of grow over the last decade, where people's shopping and buying habits have became very, very fractured. At one point in time, it was very linear. You needed something, you went to the store, you purchased it. Even in early internet, it was very linear. People performed a search, went to the site they intended to purchase and purchased it. But now the consumer's buying cycle has been fractured. And this is where remarketing can really shine and why it's important to add a remarketing audience to your campaigns. So let's look at this person's example as they go through a journey to find a really good cup of coffee. So let's say they were at a friend's house, they enjoyed this really good con of coffee, um, and they have a good understanding of kind of what the logo looks like, but they can't, they're a little fuzzy on the brand name. So they perform a search that's a little vague, a research-based search. Uh, at this point in time, you could deliver them an ad, yes, you don't have to. In fact, I don't recommend delivering an ad this early in someone's buying cycle. But by the fact that they made this search, this individual has raised their hand and said, hey, I'm in market for a specific type of Kana coffee. Let's say they didn't purchase during this search, but they decide to go to their email and ask their friend, hey, what was that coffee we had last week? Based off of this initial search, you can already deliver them ads in their Gmail inbox that relate to different types of Kana coffee. So you can see again how remarketing is already coming into play into this person's journey. Let's say that they don't respond to this ad, but they did get an email back from their friend and they now know exactly what they want. They've got a good understanding of the brand name and, and now all they need to know is where do I find it? They decide they wanna to try to find it locally so they can pick it up at a store. So where do they end up? Well, Google Maps, or in some cases, Bing Maps. And in this case here, they can't find a local store that has it. So now they have to go back to Google search. This is a very good search for you to try to advertise because this search now has a lot of intent to it. They now know what brand they wanna buy. They now have a good idea of the size they wanna buy, but they just need to know where to buy it from. And so this is a great search to begin your advertising. But again, based off of these signals, that's how we know that person's in market for this specific product. And let's say from this search result, they decide to go to a YouTube video that talks a little bit about how to brew the perfect cup of this. At this point in time, this consumer can either purchase right here in the video or make their way to the client's website and purchase the product. So you can see how round and about the consumer's habits have become before making a purchase. And a lot of that comes down to they want to develop a sense of brand trust and loyalty, and they want to know all their options. Can they buy local? Do they have to buy online? Can they develop trust through social media? And then you may finally get to the purchase phase, but you can see how remarketing allows you to deliver messaging and advertisements all the way through this customer's journey. Next, 
this is really the wild west and i think it's important to talk about is how much youtube has evolved uh in 2007 it was this clunky little thing that really was tied to a desktop computer when it was first in, um, inceived it was something you might have used to throw around videos in the office or in the dorm room of cute cats it really hadn't found its stride but if you flash forward today youtube on a daily basis gets more impressions and eyeballs and viewership than the Super Bowl. So from a marketing perspective, it is a Super Bowl every day at the fraction of the cost of what you would get with traditional television advertising. And since it's simulcast through many devices, through television, tablet, desktops, and mobile, we can do stuff we've never been able to do with video before. Uh, for example, we can tell sequential stories where people start with the first of a series of messaging and then move their way through a sequence that is uh, in order telling a story. Great way to start conversations uh, with people who are seeing people view those sequences. And YouTube, once connected to your Google Ads account and once you've connected your Google My Business account to your Google Ads, you unlock a suite of features that can really help you to target using remarketing. For example, customer patterns. You can develop an understanding of how your customers shop. Are they online shoppers? Are they in-store shoppers? Are they hybrids? Do they shop in the store with their phone in their hand? You can also get an understanding of what kind of life events that they're going through. Um, are they moving? Did they recently get married? And what types of products and services do people need when they go through those life events? Because the goal here is to really deliver ads that are relevant to those people, that aren't just white noise, that are helpful to them. And once you've connected those three properties, you do just get a general enhancement to all other audiences. So in other words, you can know a little bit more about whom you're talking to. Um, so if you haven't already, as a business, gotten onto the YouTube bandwagon, it doesn't even have to be from the app advertising perspective, you could just be posting videos, um, I highly recommend you, you head that way. One more shot there at the QR code if you do want to grab today's slides. Um, time is allowing for a brief look at what's coming next here in Google uh, before we go ahead and have a quick question and answer session. So what's coming next? Well, I think the biggest change here in this year is no more cookies. The, the cookie monster is dead. And for those of you who aren't familiar, cookies were this little bit of tracking script uh, that was used to understand user behavior. A lot of what we just looked at was originally done through cookies. Um, in order to get ahead of the changing times, Google saw a need to make something a little bit better that made it easier to project your personally identifiable information, or PI, as we call it. Um, and thanks to this new system called Federated Learning, we can now track user behavior more accurately in a manner that's anonymous. And the best part is there's no more cookies, and it's completely in the consumer's hands now, what we do and don't use. Um, it also complies with new legislation, such as the California Consumer Protection Act and potential legislation coming down uh, later this year. If any of you are already using remarketing lists, there are some changes coming. Um, for example, third party lists. So uploading a list that you have purchased is no longer allowable. But first party lists that you've created yourself, let's say through something like MailChimp or through a service similar to that, those are completely allowable. And as always, Google has a plethora of pre-made marketing lists or individuals that you can send ads to. So again, the only real change there if you're already using remarketing is no more third-party lists are allowed. And federated learning is doing away with the cookie in a way that's gonna protect everyone's privacy. So it's a win-win all around. This is pretty cool. So for the first time in a while, Google has released something that is for your brick and mortar small town shop. Um, it's been so long that it seems like they seem to just make upgrades for e-commerce and, and very large, large advertisers. Um, but this one here is great for somebody who's got a small store. Um, they don't have multiple locations, but they do want to get their ads out there. Um, and this is called local campaigns. And really, you just need to connect your Google My Business 
then create a budget and you're off and running. It's up to you if you want to establish um, a return on advertising spend, that is optional. But from there, Google's gonna use its machine learning tools to blast your ad across these networks. So your search network, the Maps ad network, your Google My Business profile, the display network, and the YouTube network. So it's a great way for somebody who doesn't have a lot of locations, uh, but does want to let people know that where their physical address is. Um, it's really good for small businesses who want to try to self-manage their campaign because you get so much advertising real estate from these ads. So I highly recommend any brick and mortar store look into local campaigns. Another big change that's came down is cost per acquisition bidding, or in other words, cost per conversion bidding. And what this is, is you no longer have to pay per click. You can actually pay by the action. For example, rather than paying for a click, you could pay per call or pay per purchase or pay per form fill. Whatever your main conversion goal is, you can now bid on that instead of the click. A couple notes, you do have to have conversion tracking set up and you have to have budgets that are considered unconstrained, meaning that you've given it enough money um, for it to be okay. Once you have those, you can then set a CPA target. So in other words, your bid, what you would like to pay per acquisition or pay per lead in this instance. Um, you want about 60 days of conversion data in your account before you consider using this feature, but it's now available throughout the Google Ads ecosystem. Something right now that's in beta, that is huge. And, and this is part of our free offer, is these video vignettes. So YouTube is the most affordable advertising medium right now that Google has to offer. Reason is, is it doesn't have enough advertisers in it. Everything in the digital ad space is really just a big auction. And when less people show up to an auction, prices are preserved pretty low. And right now you can get clicks using video in and around the neighborhood of one to two cents. Reason is not a lot of people have the ability to make video production. So to address this through the Google partner system, Google is offering video builder beta. And what this is, is that takes the best performing ads over the last seven years of YouTube, amalgamizes what about those made them successful and allows you to upload your images, your font, your brand colors, and your logo. It then takes these things and amalgamizes them into these short snippy little six, 15, and 30 second video vignettes. So it allows people who may not have the production dollar to do video production to really get into the YouTube video advertising space. It also comes with a lot of great support. YouTube basics, they'll teach you how to use creative studio, media planning, top line topics, and even how to integrate forms right into, uh, into these advertisements here. Let's say that's the biggest change coming down the pike from Google. They really are opening it up so everyone can participate in video advertising and YouTube advertising. From here, I've gone on plenty. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm excited to, to start taking a few questions here. Uh, there is a handy e-booklet available here that is great for augmenting today's lesson. Um, it's going to help you through the basics of Google Analytics and some of the nuances of remarketing. Awesome. Hey, Josh, thank you so much. Why don't we turn on our camera, you and I, so that people can see us. And there we go. Uh, highly fascinating pretty complex and a little bit scary how the you know advertising works these days right back in the days when i got my degree we talked about how to advertise in a newspaper things have evolved since then um pretty dramatic josh i have a question um I mean, it is, it's very complex, right? Why would you recommend, and I don't want to make this a sales pitch, but why would you recommend somebody working with an agency such as yours to deal with uh, pay-per-click search engine marketing? Certainly, certainly. And, you know, there's a lot of people who can definitely 
self-manage their campaigns. And we'll be the first to raise our hands if that is the case. Smaller institutions, brick and mortar shops tend to be a little bit more simple of a campaign to run. But really to get the most out of your ad dollar, you want to have a bit more complexity to your campaign. And as we saw, just adding a little complexity complexity to search ads did a lot of good things for it, made it a lot bigger. Um, but when you get into the Google display realm or into the video advertising realm, the complexity is increased by fivefold. Um, and so having somebody who is a certified partner is, is ideal um, to really guide you through those processes. And Google has a lot of really good support as well. You can call them at any time, 866-2-GOOGLE, um, and they can try to help you as best they can through, through their facilities. But really at the end of the day, it's about navigating the complexities of the modern ad ecosystem. Um, that's something that can't be taught in a quick crash course. And so that's why I would recommend it. Cool. And then um, I do remember we, so we work closely together on accounts where we think, you know, a customer could benefit from running pay-per-click because their website is not currently optimized or discoverable in Google search, right? So we need to get some traffic to that website. We once had a customer, they wanted to throw a lot of money at pay-per-click right away, but then you suggested that, hey, let's do a little bit less at the beginning. Explain the reasoning behind this strategy. Certainly. Well, and it, it's a lot like the Hippocratic Oath do no harm. And in, in that instance, the budget was was big. And, you know, most marketers are excited to, to, to jump on that instance, but it would have hurt them. It wouldn't have been the smartest money to spend, especially early in a campaign. You want to start small. You want to really develop a proof of concept over 30 to 90 days, really tweak and mess around with your targeting, your ad copy, continually test different variations of those before you commit to a budget, because you want to be able to make data-driven decisions. And in that case, the person had no data. So you do want to develop some of that in Google Ads. Um, and, and we ultimately did eventually pour more budget onto that campaign, but we did it in a way that was smart, that didn't waste their ad dollar because we started small and grew with our client. Awesome. And then what do you recommend in terms of, let's say, a smaller local business? What should they invest at a minimum? And then a, you know, a medium sized national and then a large scale e-commerce website? Sure. And, and everything's a little bit different depending on your vertical. So, for example, um, attorneys and physicians, they tend to have higher cost per clicks because they have more competition. Um, but for your local small sh shop, generally $500 to $1,000 a month is plenty for your Google advertising campaign, especially if you're using some of those new local campaigns. Now, if you're selling products online, which a lot of local shops are doing as well, they're mixing the model where they're selling online as well as having a local shop, it does get a little bit more complex and you will want a national scope. In that case, your budget is going to be a minimum of $1,000 just to reach the entire nation. Um, but again, it does depend on kind of what your specific vertical is. And not to sound too salesy, but our market analysis does help you identify kind of what your cost per click and, and projected costs would be. Cool. If you're already advertising on Google, should you also be advertising on Bing? So I think you should get your proof of concept in Google and really get that working well. Once you're getting a lot of conversions from your Google ads campaign, a lot of people don't know this, but you can just hook that right into your Microsoft advertising campaign. And so now, rather than managing two separate accounts, you're steering the ship with your Google ads campaign. Any change you make in Google ads will come over to Bing. And this is kind of, you know, them admitting that they realize they're, they're kind of second potato in this game, um, but it also allows you to expand your reach to about 21% of the search market. Bing, also depending on who your audience is, could be very good for you because Bing has lucked itself into older, early adopting, and more fluent users. Um, the reason is these, these individuals will buy the newest tech 
but they don't necessarily care what default browser or default search engine they're using. So depending on who your market is, Bing could actually be more productive um, for, for your products or services. But again, I recommend start with Google ads, get your proof of concept there, and then just connect it to your Microsoft advertising account and your Bing ads account. Well, we're right at nearly at the end. Uh, quick question, last question. Um, do you recommend also advertising on tools like networks such as LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, etc.? When does that make sense? Sure. Um, caveat too is the costs per click in all of those tend to be a little higher because we're talking to a smaller audience. And so because of that, their value is a little higher to that platform. But that said, things like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram especially, they actually know a lot more about their consumers than Google does. Um, um, and you can really get into the weeds into your customer's persona. Um, be it, it's it's only about you know eight to nine percent of the total internet. I wouldn't recommend going to those closed platforms first. Um, again, I'd say get a proof of concept in the biggest platform, which is Google. Once you know what's really working there, you can then simulcast your ads to those other platforms. Now it's not, it's a bit more of a manual process, uh, but many of the assets that you make for Google are the same assets that Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram are going to look for. Um, so by developing it in one place and then scaling it out, you're gonna ensure success in those other platforms. All right, then one more question and then we're gonna log off here. Uh, Gina is asking, what would you suggest for pre startups and startups as you know, they don't have a lot of money to burn on advertising. Any last thoughts on, you know, how to best invest the money wisely if you're a pre startup or a startup. So a pre startup or a startup, I'd, I'd actually, I'd say stay away from search advertising. I did mention that's where Google makes 90% of its money. Well, it's also because it's the most crowded auction because it's very easy to set up. So because of that, it has the highest cost per click. Um, so if, if budgets are tight, I recommend doing a strategy that's not search focused, but is a little bit more focused on display and video ads. Because in that case, your cost per clicks are under a dollar. Um, whereas in Google search, most cost per clicks can be upwards of a dollar. And the average right now is about $6 per click. So it, it can be a bit beefy. So if you're trying to be conservative with your ad dollar, stay away from Google search. That said, Google search is extremely effective. So once you have some more ad dollar um, dollars to invest, I would say don't shy away from doing the Google search campaign because it does help those other two campaigns out significantly. Awesome. Well, we don't want to make this webinar salesy, but if you do need help with what we covered today, you're welcome to reach out. Uh, we're real people. I think nice people, you know, love working with uh, good clients. Uh, yeah, Josh, thank you so much. Uh, you're one of our trusted uh, Google Ads PPC partners. We work very closely together. SEO and PPC work great together if done right. Uh, the next webinar is going to be about SEO. I'll send that link in the follow-up email. Josh, as always, uh, we're getting very nice comments here. Uh, everybody seemed to enjoy, enjoy the presentation. Uh, any last thoughts before we log off here? No, just wanted to say thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Um, I, I love collaborating with, with the, the BSEOM team. So thank you so much for your time today. It's been great. Cool. Thanks so much, everybody. Stay safe and healthy and, uh, you know, have a great Thanksgiving break. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Josh. Bye. Take Bye, care. Everybody. You're welcome.